Hello everyone, it is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. And today we're looking at Darkrai Dragons. Uh, this is a deck that has just won Anaheim uh, Regionals by Kenny Britton. This isn't the exact list, this is just how currently we are with the deck, how we like to play it. Uh, there's a few interesting uh, decisions here and it's going to be cool to see what Kenny's list eventually is. Um, although this deck doesn't really gain much from Sun and Moon itself, it feels like the format is kind of okay for a deck like this. Um, and it seemed to be a fairly safe pick going into Anaheim. Um, and yeah, it really paid off. So it's a pretty simple, consistent deck. You can see for the fact file on the right hand side of your screen, uh, typically I like to do two strengths and two weaknesses for decks, but really this is such a simplistic build that, um, it's only real advantage is that it just has good efficient damage and some acceleration with elixir and ramp with double dragon energy and its real weakness is energy denial other than that there's not really any standout weakness for the deck so um those are really the only things i could think of maybe there are more exploitable weaknesses here and there um we'll see as we go along but overall i just think it's a very solid deck that um hits good numbers uh, fairly early on in the game and continues to try and ramp up that pressure as the turns go on. So let's have a look at the list. First of all, for Pokemon, we are playing three Darkrai EX. He's usually our main attacker. Um, he's 180 HP Dark type with a very nice resistance to Psychic. This covers things like uh, Mewtwo, uh, Espeon GX, uh, Mega Gardevoir even. So there's a handful of good Psychics out there right now, so it's a nice resist to have. Um, the main attack that we look for with this guy is going to be Dark Pulse for two colorless energy. We do 20 plus 20 more for each Dark energy attached to all of our Pokemon. Bear in mind that when Double Dragons are attached to Dragon type Pokemon, these count as Dark type energies. So it's a really nice, efficient attack. Uh, basically a 60 base that just gets higher and higher when we have more energy on the board. We have Fury Belt, we have the Stadium, we have Double Dragon. This gets into easily two hit KO range and starts getting to like 160, 180, 190 um, when we start getting to the mid game, hopefully. So the intention of the deck is to get tanky with some Fury Belts or potentially move between half damage Dark Rise to try and keep as much energy still in play as possible and also have the XP share on some of your dudes to. Um, make sure the energy is sticking around on the board the whole game so that the Dark Pulse gets into good numbers. And then we have a couple of the Dragon-type attackers to charge up with Double Dragons because it's a great way of getting a plus 40 for one turn attachment, um, as well as them being featured in the deck for their own attacks as well. So yeah, Darkrai, usually the main attacker, but these guys are also very handy. First of all, two Giratina EX. It has the Renegade Pulse ability, which is already very good for you against Mega Evolution decks. Uh, most Mewtwo builds are playing Garbodor, so as long as you are able to deal with Garbodor, um, you should be fairly content. There are only a few lists playing um, Garb and Hex in the same list, and because they seem to be opting to play a 1-1 Espeon line, many of the Mewtwo players are dropping down to even a 2-1 Garbodor line to make the space. So that is clearly very good for Giratina, because you can Lysander KO, and it's unlikely that they can respond instantly with another Garbodor. Um, so then you're free to simply Chaos Wheel throughout the rest of the game. The attack itself is actually really good also. 100 base damage is not bad. Uh, Fury Belting this guy up gets you to 110, which is a pretty good number on things like Shaman EX, and consistently getting two shots even on some of these new GX Pokemon. But mainly it's the effect of Chaos Wheel, which is very good. Um, it denies Pokemon Tool, Special Energy, and Stadium cards being played. This again is really good for things like Mega Rayquaza, where not only we have the ability stopping them attacking us, but if we replace the Stadium, they can't put Skyfield back in, so even if they do hit Hex Maniac, they can't hit 170, because they won't have the bench size, which is excellent. Um, special Energy is rife right now, there's a lot of Vespiquen builds around, there's also some Persimian. Even to a lesser extent, again, the Rayquaza, again, Mega Mewtwo, somewhat um, hurt by this. So the attack is very good for denying these sorts of things. Even potentially in mirror matches, you can deny the ramp um, of the opponent by putting their own double dragons into play. So yeah, and even to an extent, tools are important. You can trap things without them being allowed to float stone and stuff. So lots of different 
intricacies to Chaos Wheel. It's good in many different spots. Um, locking in stadiums, even against things like uh, Volcanion, can be very helpful for you. Even though we don't play Silent Lab, even just like locking in parallel can be really rough for them sometimes. Speaking of rougher Volcanion, we are playing one Salamence EX as well. Uh, Salamence really does help the Volcanion matchup as well as a few others. Um, mainly looking at its first attack, Beastly Fang. It does 10 base and 50 more for each of your opponent's EX Pokemon in play. So naturally decks that just try to Hooper find themselves two attackers and a Shaman or just find three Volcanion for example. Against like Turbo Dark they like to go Hooper and start going nuts with uh, Dark Rise and stuff like that as well. Um, even Mewtwo to an extent, obviously Rayquaza again. Just having this Beastly Fang keeps things in check and lets you get big one hit knockouts for just a double dragon energy and a single attachment or an elixir or even slapping exp share onto salamance is such a huge threat so it keeps things in check stops people going crazy turbo stops them putting down the extra shaman uh, a lot of the time as well so he's a disruptive card even though he's looking to do a lot of damage either your opponent allows you to get big one hit ko's or similar to like a zoroark type thing you're limiting them be their bench without physically limiting it so very useful card, very, very awkward to deal with, and again, just fits the role of being a dragon that can get tanky and get one-hit KOs. From there, we have our own Hooper for the Scoundrel Ring so that we can get the right dragon for the matchup, as well as a couple of Darkrai, or maybe even Shaman uh, for that good old setup ability to get us drawing into more cards. We do like to start trying to hit Elixirs quickly, Ultra Balls, obviously, and start hitting our tools as well is important, so Shaman helping out for that is excellent. The one non X we're playing in the deck is going to be uh, Yveltal. It has Oblivion Wing, which can really help out against uh, Hammer decks. There's a few out there right now. There's Umbreon, there's Taurus Hammers that also plays Giratina sometimes. So um, Oblivion Winging back after you get hit with like Crushing Hammers is important because otherwise our damage becomes minuscule. So we need to have some sort of defense against this. Additionally, Darkness Blade isn't terrible. Yveltal is actually a good Pokemon to put on your bench with an EXP share. Especially because we play two reverse value in the list, because just like Giratina, uh, we can get that plus 10 via the stadium, and Darkness Blade can get the one hit KO on Shamans, which is awesome. Uh, obviously, Tina needs the Fury Belt to get to 110, but you know what I mean. A small little damage increase gets us into magic numbers, so something to bear in mind, definitely. And again, it's a Pokemon that's not weak to fighting, so that mitigates things. Um, just like the dragons, you sort of cover for weakness without actually hitting for different weaknesses if that makes sense so yeah um yeah just 10 pokemon 13 energy because we need to have lots of hitting off of a max elixir as well as you know you want to find your double dragons to attack with and also ramp up the damage for your dark cry pretty simple for items it's all fairly simple as well the super odd to recycle either the pokemon in the right situation or just get more energy in the deck for you know late game elixirs or potentially just more manual attachments uh, two Escape Rope is really our only means around Jolteon EX, um, even Regice to an extent as well. Um, they're not super popular right now, but they are important. Additionally, they're really good against Tauros, because Tauros is potentially a hurdle for this deck. Um, if you're able to Escape Rope and Lysander around it long enough, you don't really care about those 70 damage pokes. Um, you can get around the Tauros long enough to where you are in one hit KO range with some of your dudes. And then you can just laugh at the Taurus and get around it. So until that point, you need to be hitting your ropes and hitting Lysanders. Or basically your passing turns away. Or going for like a Obliv Oblivion Wing rather than just big old Dark Pulses. So bear that in mind. Really nice for Tauros. And in general, we have Chunky Pokemon. Uh, the three retreat cost of Giratina. Everything else has a two retreat cost apart from Shaman. So having lots of switching options with the Olympia, the, the floats and the ropes is all pretty important. Uh, a 3 off for the Trainer's Mail for good old consistency and helping you dig for things like Elixir. And then the 4 offs of Ultra Ball, VS and Elixir. I've mentioned why these are all important. Elixir is not only damage but also helps you get these higher attack costing Pokemon um, ready to go a lot quicker. And uh, Ultra Ball and VS Seeker are fairly self-explanatory. For the stadiums we're playing one Parallel City. It can bounce our Hoopers and our Shamans if need be. It can limit against Rayquaza, it can limit damage against uh, Aquabox as well as Volcanium players and even Vespiquen. This covers a lot right now, it's a really powerful stadium. 
Um, so yeah, very important. It's really good if you can lock it in with Chaos Wheel against a, a Volcanium player, especially if you've gone in early with the Salamence. If you've KO'd one EX with a Salamence and then you move into Chaos Wheel later on, lock in Parallel City, uh, that means their base output goes down to 110. They can steam up three times only because you've already KO'd one of their Volcanians, which gets them up to 200. So a Fury Belted Chaos Wheel with that stadium in play, that big old combination means that Giratina can take a two hit while they have to two hit for you as well. So that's really good seeing as though you've already gone through the Salamence, which can get you sometimes a four prize turn if you incorporate Hex or again the Parallel Sticks, something like that. So um, it can help you finish off games against the Volcanium player, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, then we're playing two Reverse Valley. I feel like Silent Lab is fine. I don't feel we really need to worry about Volcanium too, too much. We do have the Hex, we have the Salamence, we have lots of tools to deal with it in this list. So I feel it's better to um, play just slightly greedier have more damage just in general um, to sort of out-tempo mirror matches rather than um, have extra tools for Volk that we don't really need. It seems excessive, so instead we'll just have the damage increaser to, again, help out with Baby Eveltal and uh, help Darkrai reach knockouts that little bit quicker. For the supporters, we have the one-off Hex. I've already mentioned great for Volcanion, also great for the likes of Decidueye. Uh, Sogaleo Lorantis has turned up recently, and if you can um, hex on the turn that they need to Ultra Road away, um, that can help you catch the Sogaleo and KO it. Um, so there's a few new situations when hex is really good. In general as well, in opening turns, it's not too bad for you. Typically this deck likes to develop its own side of the board, rather than dealing with your opponent and trying to disrupt. Um, but the hex is still an option against the likes of like Rayquaza or something, turn one. Olympia is going to be nice just for the chunky retreaters of things and that slight heal can sometimes push you out of range of different random Pokemon. Uh, there's a few snipers around like Umbreon so the heal isn't minuscule and also it's a way around status from uh, Espeon GX as well which is might be popping up because of um, the popularity of Mega Mewtwo in Anaheim so keep an eye out for that. Um, then we just have two Lysander, pretty standard stuff, three N and three and four Sycamore. Again, all very standard. We're not playing Lily in this list because we don't feel that there's enough insta-play cards, although there potentially can be at times. There are certain things that you do want to hold on to. Uh, the Stadium War is obviously an important interaction in most games at the moment in Pokemon. Holding on to ropes for the right time can be important. So instead of just having... Um, Lillian here to only draw like two or three cards a lot of the time. We'd rather just have Sycamore for when we need to dump and really dig for things. Um, for the tools, we are playing the one of EXP share. Like I said, it's great on something like a Salamence. Even if it has no energy on it, Salamence can be a threat just by having EXP share on, which is really cool. Um, great on Dark Rise, really good on uh, non EXP Veltal as well. Um, plenty of options for this single tool to again just make sure that when you are suffering KOs, you're only losing. 20 damage rather than, for example, 40 damage if a Darkrai got knocked out. Uh, two Fury Belts to again just increase the bulkiness against all sorts of different decks to stay out of range, as well as the 10 damage that you gain. Uh, two Floatstone, just more movement of things. Again, it's nice on like Baby Eveltal just to have a pivot throughout the game and uh, all that normal stuff. Again, if you if it's early turns, oftentimes I like to Floatstone my initial Darkrai because that normally attacks for like 80 or 100 damage takes a hit then you can retreat into your next dark cry and that's going to finish something off a lot of the time or you can move into your one of dragons to finish things off and then you've kept the energy on the bench where it's fairly uh well a little bit more protected let's say and like i mentioned earlier just rounding out the energy pretty simple stuff so let me uh save the deck i actually need to talk about some other inclusions that you could play in here tauros is a card that um I'm not playing, I'm not playing the Ninja Boy package in here because I feel like it's kind of too clunky. If you're playing the Dragons already, I think you just sort of sack off Tauros and just say, you know what, I don't really need a GX attacker uh, in the game. Uh, Magina is one that you might consider um, to protect you from Umbreon GX and also to a lesser extent uh, Jirachi promo as well um, to protect your double dragons from getting taken off the board. Um, I guess that's something you could go down. I don't think, um, well, Umbreon wasn't that popular in Anaheim. 
Um, I think mainly more in testing for me, it's just because it doesn't really handle Taurus very well, and Taurus is very popular right now, so um, I don't feel that Magina EX is 100% necessary. A couple of other non-EXs, if you don't want to play Baby E Veltal, maybe Oranguru can be helpful, seeing as though we don't play Garb or Silent Lab, that could be nice. A lot of the time, though, a lot of other decks are playing those things. Um, also, our own Jirachi promo, if you want to deal with uh, Mirrors, potentially this can be handy. Um, just really awkward to deal with if the Turbo Dark or the Mirror player is already committed like two double dragons onto their board. Jirachi can just have a field day and overall you tempo out on them later down the line because you've just taken 80 damage off their board and they've probably not done much in response other than like Lysander and Poke for a small amount. So uh, yeah, that seems pretty cool. I even have tested around with uh, Carbink, the Energy Keeper, um, again for things like Umbreon and also there's a few Hammer decks. There's Tauros, uh, Tina Garb. Uh, or just Taurus Tina Hammers in general without Garbador. Uh, there's straight Tauros Garb, which I've played a lot of, um, and even Umbreon Hammers. Protecting yourself from the attacks, uh, the abilities, attacks, and trainer cards is really impactful for you. It's only the basic energy, so it's kind of more awkward. Maybe if you're just playing Turbo Dark, you just want to play one Carvink, uh, because obviously the Double Dragons still get taken off. Um, but that's an option for you, because the deck can start to struggle if it starts to lose the dominant board state that it starts representing. A few things that you could consider. Flagrant might be creeping back into the lists after seeing this do so well in Anaheim and uh, you might need to play it in response to that just to keep up in mirrors and in other sorts of situations. I wrote in PCL, <laughs> Pokemon Center Lady um, is an option that you could play in addition to or instead of um, Olympia depending on player preference. Uh, the heal of 60 can be really nice. It keeps you from a two hit, sometimes into a three hit KO. If you have resistance and fury bell on your side, it can be, again, really, really nice just for keeping the board presence and things like that. Enhanced hammer, again, an option for you. Um, I think it starts eating into your trainer's mail count if you start doing these things. If you want to start teching out your list a bit more, right now, just showing you a basic list. Another really cool option which um, you might want to go down is actually taking the Hooper and the Shamans out of the list and even changing Ultra Ball and just going for a heavy Nest Ball um, line with a higher support account as well. Um, this means that you don't have the awkward easy prizes and you have more bench space physically for your main attackers so that you can spread the energy around your board a bit more effectively. Um, I think it's one to try out. I don't know how effective it is. Obviously it's worrying playing a deck without Shaman but it is a testament to the power of Nest Ball and the fact that this already has space for lots of supporter cards. Um, you can just go up to a higher end count. You can start playing Lily now, which is a decent option. Um, even Professor Kakui can start fitting into the list when you start taking away Hooper and Shaman. And taking those cards away uh, makes it overall harder for the opponent to uh, win the game because they've got to get through much more high HP Pokemon rather than just, you know, our Lysander Shaman for the last two prizes for game, which is, you know, a statement that we've all heard before. And finally, Professor Kakui, I just mentioned him. Uh, right now, it's a question of space, why I'm not playing him, rather than the fact that I don't like the card. Um, it just helps the ramp. It, you can just get explosive turns where you drop a stadium, drop a double dragon in Kakui, and out of nowhere, you've just got a KO that someone really isn't expecting. And it can also be really, again, a good tool against Tauros, where oftentimes it can take too long, and they've been able to sit with Tauros just hitting 70, 70, 70 on like each of your different guys and it's just really awkward for you so having Kakui to just get that Tauros out of the way <laughs> a little bit quicker could be useful for you. So that is Darkrai Dragons, it's going to be interesting to see how far away I am from Kenny's list, I haven't seen it just yet, I don't think it's been released, um, but I'm sure it will eventually, either by himself or uh, by the official Pokemon Dem, but who knows. Uh, for now, I feel like this is a good baseline list to go off of. And uh, we'll see how it goes here. We have a Hooper start, which is nice. I'll take it. And we're going first, so... All good news here. So far. And the opponent needs Shaman as well. Glorious. Only thing is we don't know what they are playing. So 
Looks like we've prized two Darkrai, which is kind of worrying. I think I just get the whole gang here. No, maybe I do get Shaman. Uh, we already have that, so I guess we just get uh, a mix of things to deal with whatever. It's nice to represent a threat of Salamance, because if it's a... It's just good to have it. Uh, I'm going to Floatstone the active. Fury Belt this guy. I'm just going to completely fill the bench turn one. I uh, want to grab non exe Veltal. I think that's fine. Let's go mail. Uh, don't really need the reverse value because we're not attacking this turn. And Stadium War is important, I think, a lot of the time at the moment, so if we don't have to put it in, I'm not going to initiate it. Hmm, this is where the attachment is an interesting one. They've already led Shaman, so that's 60 damage for us. Um, so if, if they're playing any other EXs in the deck, we can threaten a KO on Shaman next turn. Alternatives is that we already have a Floatstone dude, and he's good in the active already. This doesn't threaten the Shaman KO, but it's more interchangeable with Darkrai. Okay. I'm going here, and I'm still just going to end without playing any other cards. Um, looking more than anything for Max Elixirs. We do have one. So, we'll see if this comes off. It does. Unlike Turbo Dark, it's a lot less likely because we're now playing a mix of special and basic energies. I'm fairly content to pass in the active here while we figure out what the opponent's playing. But yeah, decent turn for us. Filled up the bench. Got three energies into play, technically. So next turn we're doing 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. If we attack with Darkrai, so this is good. Good news. Ooh, Golden Ultra Balls. Ooh, Rayquaza. Okay. I'd be very sad if they could get a turn one KO on Giratina. <laughs> I'd be so sad. Ugh. If not, we're in fantastic shape. But we'll see. We'll see. It asks a lot, right? They need to find switch cards. Plus Spirit Link that they've already got rid of. Plus DCE, plus Mega Turbo Activator, plus all sorts of things. So they do double puzzle. They find themselves that uh, Spirit Link, so they can go straight to Mega. They have the Sycamore back in the hand. They play Jirachi, which might be their play. Turn 1, which would really be annoying for us. For now, though, we're just going to see Shaman draw some cards. Going to see Skyfield come in. There's attachment of DCE to Mega Ray. And just a pass. Okay. Definitely benching this. If I could definitely hit a stadium, I wouldn't mind Chaos Wheeling here. But because there's the Jirachi, I'm less happy about it. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. Yeah, we're taking a prize. Taking two prizes this turn, I think, sounds pretty good. Would I rather have this option in the deck? Yeah, I probably would. I'm just drawing one card now. Doesn't seem that strong. I will still replace this. I think I just get rid of the stall target. We've already got rid of a float, so. Let's initiate a race. So 
something that's very scary to do against a Ray uh, Rayquaza player. But we'll see. The Jirachi really puts me off uh, YOLO Chaos Wheeling. Okay, so the Mega Ray comes active. find themselves a nice golden ultra ball man if they have this deck in real life they've got to be minted oh they're so pretty they're going to find themselves another shame in EX there's mega turbo there's jolteon and shaman's going to draw four cards See if they found themselves Skyfield as a Sycamore. There's Skyfield. Uh oh. Uh oh. They're at 180. There's Super Rod. Attachment to Jolteon of all things. Pretty sure I'd attach to the Ray. So they can Ultra Ball for a second Hooper, I guess. Yep, so they've gone and blown us up. Which is pretty grim. But it's just Ray things, isn't it? Trainer's mail. Got to be looking for what? Maybe, uh, maybe looking for Spirit Link or something. Not bad, Ray. Not bad. Pro thinning is pro. Let's say goodbye to some shamans and some hoopers. Elixir. Sad. Okay. N and whiff energy is so bad for us. I think I'm going to go safe, but also quite weak. <laughs>
don't delinquent us. Maybe I shouldn't have put the Fury Belt down. Mm. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have put the Fury Belt down. Because now we're open to a delinquent. I mean, they've only got a five card hand. What are the chances? <laughs> okay. Single puzzle. Not going to stick them all here because uh, I want to keep the rope. Seeing as though I can't end them out of potential Lysander energy for game, I have to just do this. Lysander or no? Ooh, an N. That's not a Lysander. Can confirm. It is a flash ray, though. So now it's... Let's... Oh. <laughs> Sorry. I'm a scumbag. I was going to get all in-depth and analytical, but I'll just get lucky instead. Well, cool. I'm pretty sure the opponent should have DC attached to the Jirachi there and Stardusted us rather than Flash Ray. But maybe they were hoping that they could find the end first, uh, find the Lysander first. It's always a tightrope against Ray. Always a tightrope. But we got there. Let's see how it can do in another game. That was just fairly jammy. Hello, friend. So, fairly awkward hand here. Let's see if we can get bailed out with like an Ultra Ball or something. Looks like we're up against. Hmm. Puzzle. That's a puzzling card. Sorry, everyone. Um. Yeah, dark with puzzle. I'm intrigued. Let's draw for a mull. Orang Guru. Huh. Well, Elixir hits. Well, that's good news. We can uh, end our way out of this awkward hand. Keep the DDE around. Just pass here. Gain some more info on their deck. Just playing Oranguru, it's not going to be like ability lock heavy. So I think the sh holding Shaman's fine for now. Let's learn some more things before we start playing down our hand. Okay, so it's just Turbo Dark Puzzles, it looks like. Maybe no Garb? Maybe just. Uh, yeah, puzzles just to get more things, get more elixirs. Double puzzle turn one. Ooh. This is a very item heavy list with acros and puzzles. Nice double elixir turn one, very nice. Is it the dream? Oh my goodness, they've gone all in. And they just ultra, ultra ball two away. <laughs> wow, 
uh, they're banking on Oranguru. The trust is real. Nice, nice. So it's like they've just flipped tails on a Lima. Think of it that way. <laughs> oh my goodness, that is just filthy. Got the rope. That's not cool. Sure, bro. If that's a sycamore, I'm suing. Okay. Don't know who I'm suing. I'm just suing. Okay. Let's just get the gang out. Pretty sure Salamance is better than uh, Tina in this matchup. Let's think of some elixirs. Oh, the greed punished me. That's fine. Attaching the DDE was kind of greedy, but I feel like he ramped up so much that I kind of had to follow suit. Uh, I'm sycamoring this hand. Trying to hit more. Ooh, one more chance. A. Hey. Always greedy. So, we can respond in kind. We're the Dark Pulse. Class attaching to Warren Guru. I like it. I like it. Acrobike. And an N as well. Okay. Pretty tasty. This truly is a very speedy list from our opponent. They're playing very heavy items. So that, or so that that hand goes low enough for Oranguru, basically. I like the concept. Olympia's a very good top deck. In this exact situation. Uh, playing this is really bad against Delinquent, but I do kind of want to... Yeah, I don't need to establish it yet. I was thinking about trying to dig for EXP share, but I don't really need to establish it just yet. Okie dokie. Salamance gets its attack in while it can, because it looks pretty weak from this turn onwards if the opponent continues to play around it. One perk of playing Oranguru rather than uh, Shamans. There's a Dark Cry. Chose the EXP share the Oranguru over Dark Cry, which is interesting. It kind of like forces a seven prize game. This is a super interesting list. They're going to play Super Odd. Looks like getting back Dark Cry and a couple of energy. And Dark Pulse for 110 again. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. I think taking Oranguru off the board is good. No, let's just keep pounding away at this Dark Cry, I think. Two, 
2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. We're at 13. Not a comfortable number. Uh, dig for Fury Belt so that we can Lysander KO Oranguru. Hmm, rope's interesting. Ultra Ball's dead, but we'll just put it in hand. So, if we rope, he goes here, more than likely. But we can just Lysander again. Okay. Doing this in an effort to stay out of range. 2, 4, 6, 8, yeah, yeah. And it gets rid of his mini draw engine. Two, four, six, eight, nine. So yeah, he needs to hit energy plus elixir. There's the energy. Puzzles. Uh oh. The dream. Oh, is it single puzzle? Ah, oh, not the dream. They've got to find elixirs the old-fashioned way, drawing into them. There's one. Ooh, a whiff. That is really a big deal for us. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, yeah. Depends how many he drew. See how lucky I was. That is a game changing whiff, though, I think. Like, if he hits that, my board is terrible in comparison. Using the last puzzle of time. Are we alive? Oh my goodness, we're alive. Well, that's incredible. So, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. I'm playing this ultra ball. No, no. We won't. I need to keep the super rod around. Okay, let's just dart pulse. It's a lot of damage. And we see an N again. The EXP share from the opponent.
And they're considering their options. Yeah, I thought they'd retreat. They have to deny me from Oblivion Wing KOing this. Hmm. The Double Dragon top deck hurts me more than it helps me. I think I might just be going for Lysander Prizes here. to the stadium it's been excellent all game that stadium it's fixed a lot of numbers for us see so yeah, attachment to Noni XC Veltol nest ball first nest ball I think we've seen so they're still playing heavy ultra so they may still play like one or oh yeah they still play shaman there it is <laughs> what am i saying but definitely no uh hooper there's lysander on dark cry and Dark Pulse for 100. We'll get that EXP share value. Hex is really bad. Uh, we have, we're riding our luck again, guys. Thinning, attaching. Forty plus one thirty isn't great. So we got hmm. It was really detrimental that we got rid of Parallel because we couldn't parallel the two dead cards, Shaman and Hooper, from our board so we couldn't develop more Darkrai. I definitely want to try this list with just Nest Balls. Good game though. They had a, a really cool turn one. Let's be frank though, the Orange Guru for three cards was pretty jammy hitting the Escape Rope. <laughs> They don't hit escape rope there, they do like 80 to a Uveltal, which doesn't matter. Or they do nothing because they can't move Orang Guru. And then we have the initiative and the game's completely different. But hey ho, they took the gambles and it paid off. Let's get one more game in. So far we got lucky against a uh, Ray. And then we had a close game against... A mirror of sorts. Leading you, Veltol again. Not too shabby. A couple of males to try and find ourselves. Ooh, Mega Mewtwo Garb. Okay. We're up against all the meta decks today. Good news. Uh, so, yeah, a few extra draws as well to try and get into some Pokemons. Oh, don't concede straight away. <laughs> we were going to have a good game. Come on. That's not cool. Don't just concede after mulling twice and starting Hooper. Come on. You don't deal with that in real life. Alright, one more game.
the opponent gets to call the flip here. We'll see if they're skillful enough to get heads or choose correctly if they want turns. Super skillful. We'll go first. And we have a pretty good hand. We got Ultra Ball, we got Elixir. We got everything we need. Looks like we're up against Umbreon. Now Umbreon's a difficult matchup for us. Um, Dark Call GX is obviously a pain to deal with. And sometimes they also play Tauros, which is also equally frustrating. So we'll see. If it's heavy hammers as well, we could well need a... Uh, We'll probably need Baby Veltal at some point in this game for certain. Opponent taking their time to decide what to do. Hope they decide quickly. <laughs> Here we go. Alright. Pidgeot. Pidgeot. Umbreon. Um, I don't think Salamence is going to be that good. I think I'm going to toss it away. I want to keep the ropes if it's against Pidgeot. Okay. I think I'm still going hoops here. Is our hand that strong? Yeah, we don't actually need to hoop her. Uh, but getting a dragon out could be good. Uh, fine. It's a deck that, although it plays Hooper, it doesn't always love doing it turn one. Not that it's not good to do it turn one. As like a tempo thing, it can hurt you your, your bench later on. Okay. That's a hit. I think we also put one to the active. If we go both to bench, it sets up the rope play for Eevee, even if it does evolve. Okay. We'll sit on this hand. There's another Pidgeot, so there goes my rope ideas. <laughs> There's a Nest Ball. Gonna find themselves that Eevee that we mentioned moments ago. There's a Fury Belt. Pidgeot's just the budget Tauros, right? Maybe they play Ninja Boy Tauros. Ooh. Oh, Skull Grunt. Rude. That is just rude. Okay. We're just going to rope, attach, and attack. Hitting's eight, hitting 80 is not horrible for mirror move for us if they have it and they have a low hand size. They have Lysander and they're passing. We get lucky and don't have to end them. We get unlucky and don't get a switch guard. Let's power up more dark cry. And we'll pass. There's Kakui with some draw power. And male fail. Ah. Floatstone, my old friend, 24680, not going to commit the Fury Belt because if they do somehow develop Dark Call, I mean they're not going to develop it now, right, but 
still. Could go more aggressive with this turn, I guess. Okay. Let's start really trying to ramp it up now. And when I say really ramp it up, I mean attach one energy. <laughs> But it is impact. It is an impactful number. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen. Okay, Spinder. Hello. What are you in the deck for, my friend? Okay, more Lysanders. That's fine. We have Olympia. We can just take our time. Let's just set the crew up. Don't really want to end them still. Do I want to attach this? I guess so. Yep. That's about right. Okay. Wait to find switch card. Just trying to scout how bad the hand is. It must be really bad. Hey, Olympia. Fantastic. We can do things. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Fourteen's no different to fifteen. Uh, now that we have the Olympia, though, we have two VS in hand. I'm happy enough to go into the Fury Belted one. There's an attachment so they can actually strafe away. We're going to go ahead and Lysander. Obviously. Going to start committing some cards. Play around N if they actually draw a card. That's a random receiver. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. They found Kikui. That's not the supporter you're looking for, my friend. Acrobikes potentially good. Mm. 
didn't look that good. Got rid of an energy to take a super rod. Don't even know if you play the super rod because these are three top decks you don't really want. Who knows? We're gonna get hit with a feather lance. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Yeah, we can't ramp the way up. Not gonna spend VS Seeker now because it could be a way that we actually lose the game. How many VS Seekers have we gone through? We've only gone through one. I guess it's kind of okay to do it. I think this is fine though. Max Potion Mirror Move in a three card hand isn't too likely. That's Flare Grunt. <laughs> Confusion plays. That's why we hold Olympia. God, Fury Belted Spin is actually a tank. 120? Not a bad card. Just down to Pidgeot now. And they seriously didn't draw a supporter all game. There we go, though. Weird games. Play against two meta decks. Then Mewtwo conceded to us, and we ended up playing against Umbreon and Pidgeot. But there we go, a pretty decent baseline list, I would say, uh, for Dark Dragons. It's going to be interesting to see Kenny's list when it is revealed. Keep an eye out for that. Um, I'm sure we'll anal analyse it on the uh, stream at some point when it does become available. So please leave a like to this video if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you've not already. Uh, for now, though, it's been Joe from Omnipoke, and I'll be seeing you guys in another video soon.